Welcome to the Modernizer Die Podcast, CFML News Edition, where we keep you up to date with everything going on in the Cold Fusion community. We'll share the latest news on events, releases to engines, frameworks, libraries, and tools, as well as spotlighting quality content from the community. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Modernizer Die CFML, New- CFML News Edition podcast. I'm What's Eric up? Peterson. And I'm Brad Wood. What's going on? We're flying Gavinless this week. Uh, it's so, a scary place so, to be. <laughs> if there's any technical difficulties, that is the explanation. <laughs> so. yeah. it's, it's scary enough to fly in the first place, but to fly Gavinless is even worse. I know, right? So. I think my seat cushion can be used as a flotation device, but I haven't tried. <laughs> we want to thank our sponsor, Orta Solutions, for sponsoring this podcast. You can get live training from the makers of your favorite box products. Coming up is the Cold Box Hero, the Superhero API edition this week, July 23rd and 24th. There is still time to register, and that is taught by our fearless leader, Luis Mahano. Yay. And for a more a la carte, uh, on your own time uh, training, you can go check out CF Casts, which is the premier Cold Fusion and CFML video training website. Isn't it the only one? Hey, it sounds better to say premier <laughs> and best. That, so. that, also makes it, that also makes it the worst one, technically, if technically. it's the only one. We we, we need to we need to create a second one that sucks just so there can be two in the market and then we can say it's legitimately the best. <laughs> you you go for it, Brad. <laughs> oh, I was going to sign that ticket to you. <clears throat> speaking of <laughs> speaking of supporting us. <laughs> yeah, speaking of supporting us, uh, also thank you to our Patreons. We are at the sixty three percent mark. We've gone up. Thank you for fully funding all of our podcasts. Uh, you can check out our Patreon site on patreon.com slash Solutions. If you love our podcasts, you love all that we do for Cold Fusion and CFML, uh, consider chipping in. And we want to especially think we have a new Patreon supporter this week, Mario Rodriguez. Thank you. Yeah. And if you hate our podcast, it's probably because you're not sponsoring us, so you just need to start sponsoring us and it'll get better. So. Yeah, you'll, you'll just automatically enjoy the sound of our voices more. <laughs> We need a gimmick like the the leftist tears tumbler that the Daily Wire podcast has, or something. Some you know giveaway. I don't know what it would be. It'd be a free copy of Cold Box, probably. Is probably what it would be. <laughs> okay, so we have a new section this week. Let's see if I can make it work. Ha ha! The CF Cast <clears throat> section. Ooh. So CF Cast gets regular updates, and we wanted to talk about some of the new content this week. Uh, first off is a free series that Brad is very familiar with. It is the What's New in Command Box 5. Now, technically, this isn't a brand new series. It was released over time on YouTube, but it's now all uh, combined in one place over in CFCast for you to watch, binge watch at your ledger. That's right. The other update we want is there is the Coldbox Masterclass. This is uh, part of the subscription package that you pay for, and videos are releasing over time. There are something like nine different modules. Uh, if you are wanting to get started with Coldbox, if you're wanting to dive into a specific section, maybe you're rusty around uh, interceptors, or you want to learn a little bit more about Wirebox, this is the class for you. You can find both of those right now on cfcast.com. And if you have any suggestions that at our support page, uh, you can find a link at the bottom. You can give us your suggestions on the videos or series you would like to see. That's right. Yep. Message us with some content you're interested in. Uh, do you want to talk about the uh, Adobe security patch? Yeah. Let's move on to our... Maybe. That was actually above the, uh, the CFcast stuff in the show notes. Um, I think we're doing them out of order, but that's all good. There's a news slide somewhere. We're going to pretend that we're on news. Okay. We're going to pretend Gavin's news. here. 
Yeah, let's talk about the security patch. Um, Adobe released. Yeah, Adobe. Go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, I was, we were both going to say in unison, ready? Three, two, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so Adobe released updates for 2016 and 2018. Um, and it is a security patch. There are a few little um, bug fixes, I think, that went into it as well. So make sure you read through the tech notes. Um, the, the vulnerability for Adobe Cold Fusion is a DLL search order hijacking uh, and privilege escalation. I really don't have no clue what that means or how it would be exploited. Uh, according to the, um, the tech bulletin from Adobe, there were no known exploits using it and they thought the, the likelihood of it being used was low. Um, either way, they obviously recommend installing it. Um, so if you're on Command Box, we do have ForgeBox updated with the latest security patches for uh, Adobe Cold Fusion 2016 and 2018. So all you need to do is dial in your server.json to make sure you're using that. And of course, Adobe also has a note in their security bulletin that recommends also updating your JDK or GRE to the latest um, LTS release of either Java 8 or Java 11. So make sure you do that at the same time. And of course, again, if you're using Command Box, you can always get the latest Adopt Open JDK builds using the Command Box functionality that downloads that for you. That's right. Now, uh, for Docker, our Docker images, I believe if you're specifying your own uh, engine in the server.json, you'll get the updates just like normal. But if you're using one of the pre-baked ones, those are still being worked on. Is that correct? I believe so, but I, I'm only 70% sure. <laughs> we, we can check internally. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're using just the vanilla image, the command box, uh, I'm sorry, order solution slash command box then you can pull the latest version right now. I'm sure if we were to go look at Docker Hub, we could see what tags were out there, um, but I haven't looked yet. Got it. And all righty. Uh, in case you missed it, we, there was a Cold Fusion meetup this last Thursday, July 16th. It was what web developers can learn from native mobile developers with TJ Vantol. So we have the recording link if you would like to go check out that session. Um, from the online Cold Fusion meetup. And if you're looking for v new content, we have one coming up this Thursday, July 23rd at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. It is Intro to Native Script with Alex Ziskind. So I don't know anything about Native Script. Do you know anything about Native Script, Brad? You know, I don't. I'm so much of a back-end guy, I've never even looked into it. I see the little description here starts out by saying web developers are people too, so it sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it looks like it's a framework. It's uh, to build mobile apps using JavaScript, CSS, instead of having to go learn, uh, you know, Swift or I guess Java. We all kind of know Java, Kotlin, something like that. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Again, that's this Thursday. July 23rd, 6 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. 6 p.m. Eastern time. Perfect. All right, so there's an Adobe webinar coming up um, in, what, two days? It's July 23rd. Understanding the what, when, and how of the API manager architecture and its various components. Um, and that's by Kailash Bahani. Um, that is 10 a.m. Pacific time, it looks like. So it's going to dive into the API manager architecture uh, learn about the various components, including data store, server, elastic search, um, how to install it, and all of the settings. So the API manager is a is a separate product from Adobe Cold Fusion. Um, but I think the, I could be wrong, I thought there was some overlap with the licensing um, where a Cold Fusion license might give you um, some access to the API manager. But I didn't know it was something you install um, as a separate service in front of um, any backend API, but I know it works well with Cold Fusion. And it uh, can supply things like rate limiting or translation security and stuff like that. So that's the API manager. And that is July 3rd, which is what? 23rd. Oh, sorry. 23rd. And the two is not important. The three is the important <laughs> part of it. Um, yeah, Charlie Earhart just confirmed in the in the comments, as I was hoping he would. You do get an API manager um, with Cold Fusion Enterprise. So if you have an enterprise license of Cold Fusion 2016, 2018, um, it sounds like you have the ability to use the API manager already. And you can come to this mm. webinar and figure out how to get going with that. Yeah, and I mean, it is a separate installation, as Charlie just pointed out. So even though you have the ability to use it and the license to use it, 
um, you may not even know it exists. So you, right. you have to actually go and install it to be able to use it. There's a second Adobe webinar uh, left this month. It is a bird's eye view of PMT architecture and how to harness its true potential with Nimit Sharma. Uh, PMT. So Eric, what's PMT stand for? Well, we're guessing. <laughs> I couldn't find it on their website, but we're guessing it's Performance Management Toolkit or something like that. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, we this should is... come up. With, we should come up with a new acronym for it, like mm -hmm. the Pigeon Mayonnaise. I don't know, Trebuchet. I, I'm, I'm drawing blanks here. <laughs> I'm not the creative type. So this session will walk you through everything you need to know about the PMT architecture and configurations to look out for when installing it on your systems. You'll explore common customer issues and find out how using archiving can reduce disk consumption. So performance monitoring tool set. Tool set. I finally found it. Okay. Yeah, we were we were close. We were close to it. Uh, rounding out the webinar announcements, there is an Ordis webinar. On Friday, July 31st, with Grant Copley, it is injecting dependencies with Wirebox. Yay, love Wirebox. Yeah, I think he'll be going through both the automatic, you know, built for you and cold box, and also how to put it in any other CFML application. So, Wirebox is one of those things that when I started looking into cold box, I thought this thing is in insane and I don't understand it and it's complicated <laughs> and then you know you you figure out that it's just this big box of stuff that's built for you and you ask for it so if you if, if Wirebox has ever been mystical and crazy and weird to you like come have Grant help you understand that it's just a little a little helper it's not as hard as and as intimidating as it sounds it's not scary the first time I ever heard of dependency injection, it was it was back before the days of, of Wirebox, and Cold Spring was about the only thing. And I asked a coworker, it was my very first Cold Fusion job, I was like, what's dependency injection? And they were like, oh, I don't know, it's some like really complex thing if you have like huge apps. I don't think we need it. <laughs> and that's all I knew about it for years. Um, and then like you said, I, I came to realize, oh, it's actually just a really easy way to say, please create this CFC for me and every, all the dependencies it needs. Um, once it was demystified, the the mysticalness, as Luis says, was gone. <laughs> yeah, I it, it can be super useful, especially. Uh, I was looking into, um, so it can be helpful in testing. I was trying to figure out a way to freeze time in Lucy to be able to say <laughs> in my test like, the time stops now. Make an assertion now. Forward time by an hour, and then make a different assertion. Oh. But uh, Lucy. Just you just, just use, use the sleep function and just count how many milliseconds you <laughs> yeah, for an hour. Yeah, yeah not if you uh, wanted to sleep for four hours. Um, <laughs> but uh, Lucy just uses system dot get current time millis or something like that. So there's no way to mock it or anything. So I don't know. Made me sad. If there was a clock though, a mockable clock. See, my understanding of Ruby is they allow some really funky, like kind of meta programming where you can muck around with some of the internal classes like that. I'm not sure how I feel about that because it sounds like I could really screw stuff up, but I bet I there's mean, a way to stop time in Ruby. All mocking in test frameworks is really just mucking around in places you're not supposed to be, but we want to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I've, I've seen apps that, you know, do a lot of time zone based stuff and they like, they never use the now function. They have some like, you know, get now function of their own design that then internally, you know, does some time zone nonsense. You know, anything you need to muck around, but usually involves a, a layer of abstraction being, you know, laid on top of it. And then you muck around it with the abstraction. That's yeah. just a very technical term, by the way, muck around. <laughs> I think it accurately describes what most of us do every day. <laughs> okay. Uh, rounding out the news, there is a Docker developer survey. And we want to ask everybody that is using Docker to uh, fill it out, mostly because you can mention how much you love Swarm, because we love Swarm, and we don't want Docker Swarm to go away. Because every time I look into Kubernetes, I think, why isn't this just Swarm? <laughs> so <laughs> so if you are like us yeah. and you love Swarm, there's a link for you to fill out. We both posted it. Um, That's how yeah, and I also, it is. I also made sure I mentioned Cold Fusion or CFML 
or the Ortis uh, Docker image is like every single option they had an other text box. I'd be like, Cold Fusion rocks! So whoever has to, I don't know if anybody reads those, but I dropped that in there a few times. Okay. It rounds out the news. So now let's move on to uh, conferences. Um, conference adjacent, I guess, to start with, <laughs> uh, is the workshop coming up, the Cold Box Hero to Superhero API edition. It is the 23rd and 24th. That's this Thursday and Friday mm -hmm. with Luis Mahano. So it's fill there are still tickets available. If you attended into the box, you should have received an email f with a coupon code for 15% off. If you didn't, you can still get 10% off using the code PODCAST10 for listening to this podcast. So come learn from the maker of Cold Box itself this week. We'll post this one in to the chat. Okay. Uh, uh, we have some Adobe news too. Uh, last week we mentioned, maybe even two weeks ago now, we've mentioned for a while that Adobe's Cold Fusion certification oh. is now available online. So they started this up, I believe, at the last CF Summit mm -hmm. um, in, in person. But due to the uh, current state of affairs, you can now do it online. <laughs> due to so, the cancellation of everything. <laughs> so there's some online videos and a course that you can take to get your certification. And you can check out the link in the show notes for more information on that. Yes. Yeah, so speaking of everything being canceled, um, the... Uh, Adobe Cold Fusion Summit West in Vegas has kind of been on the edge of the question mark of what the heck they're going to do for a while now. Um, it has been officially um, announced as an online conference, so there will be no uh, Vegas for us, but there will be the conference online. So I don't think they have the days yet. I can look and see if they've updated it. Um, I don't believe it, they have. It is so. going to be in November, so it's about the same time. Uh, same part of the year. Yeah, I don't see any dates yet. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be in November. Now, uh, the speakers listed on the site are still the 2019 speakers, which did cause a bit of confusion. There was some, uh, I think it's uh, Tony Chunkis maybe, um, on Twitter were saying, wait, I'm confused, but I missed the call for speakers. Um, I was, you know, hoping to speak. What happened? Uh, yeah, it was Tony. Um, but that's just the 2019 speakers. The call for speakers for 2020 has just gone out. Um, that was, uh, I saw it on Twitter, Alicia uh, tagged us, so we'll have the link for that as well. If you're interested in speaking, um, this is an online conference, so you don't have to worry about, you know, about travel, taking off work. Um, it's also a little bit, you know, less intimidating for some people to do an online session as opposed to getting up in front of, like, real-life people. So put in any, uh, any topics you have for the, um, uh, sorry, I'm reading Giancarlo's comment, <laughs> please Adobe don't use Connect. <laughs> uh, right. Um, had a little bit of a fiasco, I think, with the developer week with Connect. Um, but yeah, so if, if you want to speak, um, go ahead and get your topics in. I don't know any details on how many topics they're accepting um, or what the schedule will look like, but the call for speakers is open. Yeah, we've posted that link in the chat, and it will be in the show notes as well. Um, and then, as we say most weeks, there's no no news for CF Camp right now. Um, understandable. Hopefully, we hear something soon. So, I think we know what it's going to do, though, which is that I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Unfortunately. That or online, one of the two, right? So. Yeah, it'd be nice if they could get some online content. There's there's a good collection of uh, of speakers that they kind of tap into over there across the pond that we don't get in the other conferences. So. <laughs> I have to come back to the Adobe Connect thing because Giancarlo is saying, do you want to hear the speakers or the fans on their machines? Uh, <laughs> to be fair, Zoom isn't, you know, Zoom likes to speed my machine up too, but it is better than Connect. So, <laughs> all righty. That rounds out the conference talk. Let's move on to the blogs, tweets, and videos of the week. Uh, so the first one up is a video. It's a video uh, from Matt Cl Clemente. He streamed himself building a new Forgebox module for producing weighted round robin results. Um, 
I love these kind of videos to see somebody like describe the problem space they're trying to solve and go step by step. So, um, yeah, I will po post the video in. Check it out. It's also we'll dive a little bit more into what the module does because we're gonna cover it in our Forge Box section today. Nice spoilers. Spoilers, sweetie. Alrighty. Um, next we have a post from Adobe, 25 years of Adobe Cold Fusion. Yep. Is this the post that had the video in it? Yes, it is. So, um, I know that they, um, they had sent out some emails, I don't know who all got them, asking people to record little video clips of how they've used Cold Fusion. Um, I don't know if they didn't get any re anybody responded back or if they're going to make another video in addition. Uh, this video just kind of has like a little, you know, a bit of talking and some um, stuff in the background, just going through kind of the history of Cold Fusion. Um, it's just kind of a fun watch, especially if you've been around Cold Fusion for a while. It covers a lot of the different, you know, acquisitions and technology and people that were a part of it. It's kind of a throwback seeing some of the screenshots they have of uh, the websites. Um, like I remember back when, you know, we used to have that on online. But anyway. That video is a nice little recap of 25 years of Cold Fusion. Uh, there's, of course, a number of languages that turned 25 this year. Um, Java, JavaScript, and Ruby all were created in 1995 along with Cold Fusion, so we, we always share our birthday with a few other languages. It's kind of weird to think of like JavaScript and Ruby as old because everybody treats them as much younger. <laughs> You know, the new hotness, but they're not really that new. Yeah. I mean, it's true. <laughs> a lot of perception. I mean, I, I, I see a lot of threads that go around, like on Twitter, people complaining, you know, you know, I ah, quit hating on PHP just because, you know, you say it's old. Um, I mean, I, I chimed in a thread where people were complaining about, you know, people always say PHP is old and legacy, but, you know, they haven't seen Laravel and our modern stuff. Um, you know, and I, I'd kind of laugh and I'd reply to him. I was like, yeah, Cold Fusion is the same thing. People see it as old and legacy, but, you know, our Laravel's cold box, you know, and the tooling around it. But a lot of people have never used that. They don't know anything better. Um, and even um, there was somebody in the Twitter thread, I think it was from like the San Francisco area, and they were complaining that even like Ruby, I think, um, in, you know, within that developer community was, you know, was pooped on for being old and, and not new enough or something it's just kind of funny how the sort of cycle goes around and you have like the new hotness and then you know a few years later everyone's like ah that's a pile of crap um but <laughs> it's a figure, fickle a fickle group figure you don't you don't really know all the creaks and problems of a language until you've used it for long enough <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so. uh sean john corfield used to actually say that um as an interview question he liked to ask someone one of the things that they disliked about a language because you know if, if you know a language good enough you're bound to know things you don't like about it you know no matter how much you love it um i could like probably write a book about the things i don't like about cold fusion on some days uh but it's, it's a good point you know yep always warts in any language all right uh there was a blog post about the updates that we covered earlier the cold fusion 2018 and 2016 updates so you can read more about that and I believe it also talks about um, applying it. Uh, there were a couple of blog posts by Charlie. The first one was a link to the CF Summit Fall 2020 going online that we talked about. Again, there's not any new information really, except that it will be online, no dates, no uh, tracks, no information, but it will be online and free. So the real question is how many sessions will Noah Irk? submit that's the real question <laughs> um let's go 16 there's my guess mm. i'll put a quarter on it that's as much as i'll I bet <laughs> i bet one dollar <laughs> closest without going over um okay <laughs> uh yeah. and the second one is charlie has a post about more on today's cf update and the importance of securing car files mm -hmm. uh, brad that's are you it. able to tell me what a car file is uh, Cold Fusion Archive. Huh. It's basically um, an export of all of your Cold Fusion settings. It embeds all the information from the XML files and all your configuration 
you know, car files have been around forever. And I, I believe they used to be an enterprise only feature. And I think at some point, I'm sure Charlie can say when, I think it became a feature that standard could use. Um, it overlaps uh, to a degree with stuff like CF config does. CF config is a bit more lightweight, just a single JSON file. A car file, I think is a bit more encompassing and it's actually an archive, like a, you know, a zip file. Um, and you could export everything from one server and you can import it into another, those kind of things. Um, of course, the, the purpose of the, <laughs> The granddaddy of CF config. The purpose of the of the uh, posts that um, that Charlie's point was, and the same thing is true of CF config, and he made that point, um, is that you need to treat your car files with the same um, security and caution as you would your actual Cold Fusion installation home, whose XML files contain easily decryptable, you know, data source con uh, credentials, maybe your mail server credentials, you know, hashed passwords. Uh, you know, the kind of stuff that's stored in there. When you export that into a car file, if you just lead that laying around your desktop on a server, or even worse, and it's some web accessible location, um, someone can take that car file and they can reverse engineer, um, you know, private information about your server. So you want to make sure you treat those um, carefully. You know, you delete them when you're done because uh, they contain all the same information that your Cold Fusion installation has. And of course, the same is true of CF config. Your CF config JSON file also contains all of the, you know, secrets of your server. So um, I mean, it seems kind of obvious when you think about it, but a lot of people just see a zip file and think, oh, this, you know, there can't be a way you could actually, you know, see what's inside of that, but you can quite easily. So now um, uh, for CF config, we, uh, one way that we mitigate the security risk is we usually use environment variables in placeholders in the config file, correct? That is true, but that's not the default behavior. There's a ticket in place to try to find a way to make that the default the, the default behavior. I can't freaking talk. Default behavior. Um, so what, right now with CF config, for instance, you would need to export your configuration of a JSON file, go and replace the passwords with the uh, with the little placeholder text. Um, if you just you know export your configuration of a JSON file and throw it somewhere, uh, it'll have just plain text passwords by default. Um, so. Yeah, see, since CF config can transfer between Adobe and Lucy, and even different Adobe versions that use different algorithms for encryption, they have different salts or seeds. Um, CF config doesn't even bother trying to secure the passwords. They're easily decryptable um, if you know the algorithms. I have libraries on Forgebox that I wrote that will decrypt them for you. Um, so CF config doesn't even bother trying. It's just, here's your password. It's in plain text. By the way, you should probably, you know, secure this. Uh, and Charlie even uh, suggested some updates to my CF config documentation. I sort of take some of those things for granted because I wrote it and I'm like, yeah, duh, it's your password. You should secure that. Uh, but it might not be obvious to everyone. Um, a lot of people are surprised when they use CF config and they, they crack open the JSON file and we're like, hey, that's my password in plain text. I'm like, yeah, how else is it going to connect to the database? <laughs> but it's, it's good that people know about that because um, it's not always obvious. Awesome. Okay. Uh we got a couple tweets next. One, the first one's from you, Brad. Something about the next me. version of Command Box, a new feature. Yeah, something Luis asked me to make forever ago, and I finally got around to doing it. Um, <laughs> Command Box has a watcher library, which is uh, has a nice little kind of fluent API, and it's it's what powers the test box watch command, the the cold box watch, the uh, I'm sorry, cold box reinit watch that Scott Steinbeck made, and even like the CF format watch. Um, we wrote the test box, or, I'm sorry, the command box watcher, because um, we were tired of, uh, of people using Node for crap. People were like going, <laughs> writing Node libraries to, to watch for their test. I'm like, what? No, use Cold Fusion. So we made our own watcher. Um, and uh, I even had an interest, interesting uh, conversation with uh, Zach Spitzer on Twitter this week, um, brainstorming some ideas to even maybe improve the um, command box watcher using some of the Java APIs. Um, for the, the tie into the file system so you don't have to pull. But anyway, um, the, the watcher library is something you can use in task runners or custom commands. What, uh, what we've added in this next version of command box is just a super generic watch command where you can just give it the file globbing path of the files you want to watch, which could be, you know, star star, like everything. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, you know, star.cfm, star.json. And then you just give it a command you want to execute. So anytime the files change um, that you specified, it'll run a command for you. So if you want to, you know, restart the server anytime your server.json file is saved, um, you know, you can do that. Uh, you can basically kind of just build your own uh, generic watchers. So we'll we'll find some ways to make that even more interesting in the future. Um, Luis and I have even talked about 
uh, ways to be able to start a watcher that maybe runs in the background um, as opposed to uh, running in the foreground. We'll have to play with some more features, but we're just trying to give people more tools in command box to be able to watch files and then do things in response, which is a pretty common uh, pattern for development. Cool. Looking forward to it. The next tweet, this one made my day, it was from Ben Nadal on Twitter. Um, he had posted one of his blog posts and uh, that we'll get to. And somebody responded saying, it's wild that Envision runs on Cold Fusion. Um, <laughs> and his response here, let's switch over to show everybody, was, well, at least some of it does. Some of it runs on Golane and Node as well, but obviously the coolest parts run on CFML. <laughs> So isn't isn't that a gift from Napoleon Dynamite? I believe so. so. I, I was just telling my one of my kids about Napoleon Dynamite uh, recently, saying we need to watch the movie. And my wife was like, "Really? That movie was really stupid." I'm like, "That's why it was genius. It was so stupid." <laughs> so I just really yeah, like that, and really like that it didn't. You know, Ben was very kind there to be. <laughs> um, I think that's what we need, right? So just made me happy yep okay the next one I threw in this isn't new as far as I know but I came across it uh, Lucy and the Lucy docs has a using Java and Lucy and this is one of the guys that Egal wrote I don't see a name on it we could check github um, but it just even uh, scrolling through it briefly it showed some of the things that I have struggled with in Java and forget. Um, it talks about kind of that proxy that it creates at first, and it, treating it like an mm -hmm. import statement. It talks about the Java, the Lucy types. There's one down here that talks about nested inner classes using this dollar sign. I never remember this, so yeah, things like that. that. Could be a pain <laughs> to figure out. Um, it, it I'm just, pretty certain Egal wrote this guide a while ago. Yeah, I don't think it's new, but I found it and I thought I'd throw it in because it was really nice. Um, it also made me excited for the Lucy 6 features about implementing Java interfaces natively without having to do create dynamic proxy. I'm still really mm -hmm. excited for that. So That's funny. Cool. The history in GitHub just shows the initial import from the Rilo pages. All right, so it's old. It's not news, but I thought it was awesome, so I'm sharing I mean, it. <laughs> I, I think a lot of it still applies to Adobe Cold Fusion as well, because um, Adobe Cold Fusion and, and Lucy and before that Rilo have very similar behaviors with the create object of, of Java type, so worth the read. Yeah. The GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions. Actions. We have a blog post from Matt Gifford about GitHub Actions with Command Box and Test Box. I've been waiting for these to come out. I know Pete Freitag did one. Here's another. I want to use GitHub Actions because it would be so, nice to have everything in one place, but I don't want to be the one that figures it out. <laughs> right. So you know what? Just this morning, I decided I was going to use this on a new project. Um, I'm putting together a, an SDK for RabbitMQ um, with Cold Fusion. And um, I was going through setting the repo up, and I have a, a kind of a standard Travis file. And I was like, you know what? Like, there's a couple good posts out there. This would be a really good opportunity because I don't really have the time, oftentimes, to go rewrite a perfectly good working Travis job and get have actions. But I was like, this would be a great, you know, like so I'm starting from scratch just to see if, like, how much work it is to take, you know, one of my kind of Travis build templates and just get it running and get have actions. I already searched, uh, just like Travis, I can spin up a Rabbit M MQ service inside of the little test environment, which I'll need in my case. And a lot of my work happens inside of a command box task runner as part of the build. So, you know, as long as I can install command box and fire off the task runner, um, I'm hoping it shouldn't be too hard. Um, I think the only missing piece I haven't Googled yet is doing the S3 sync, which I'm sure there's, you know, support for that. So hopefully with luck, I'll be using Matt Gifford's blog post and Pete Freitag's um, guide, and I'll be getting my first GitHub Actions working. Yeah, this week not, not only um, will you probably be using his blog post but you'll be using his action now because that's one of the neat things with github actions is you can create a repo have it versioned you know with branches or tags and then other people can just reference that um, really right see I here. haven't even looked into it enough yet but that is genius yeah. so showing that's what right we've, here we've been... there's a, a steps here that will go through kind of if you think of your shell script 
First one uses a checkout action. You don't actually need to know all the steps because it's using GitHub's actions. And then the second one is the new uh, test box action that Matt wrote. And you can specify your CFML engine. Even in a matrix, you can specify it so you can test all of them. So that's the kind of the power and promise behind GitHub Actions is you can create these kind of abstracted away um, parent actions or super See, actions. See, that's nice. See, I haven't even like looked into it yet. All I did is made the decision I'm going to try it, and I hadn't even read through the post yet. See, I love that because that's one of the biggest kind of downsides right now of stuff like Travis is, you know, Cold Fusion never has quite the flash and pomp and circumstance about it to get the attention of services like Travis to give us like baked in support where we can just be like cold fusion and they just automatically have command box. So we always kind of end up having to like install stuff ourselves on some base image. And there's never really like a super good way it seems to put some like build template out there that all cold fusion developers can just like tap into. Mm -hmm. So I really love this idea of having reusable actions um, that somebody's kind of put together and you can just say, I want to run this action and encapsulate some stuff. So one thing that I would love to see, and if anybody's done it, uh, tweet at us, let us know, and we'll cover it. Um, but being in GitHub, I feel like it should be pretty easy to commit. And one of the, uh, one of the things I often have mm. issues with is I like to set up CF format for my repos, but you can't format their code that they pushed because that doesn't work when they try to you know make another change. So I just wonder if there's a way on you know, like merging a pull request, you can have an action that formats, commits, and then merges instead of having to do the back and forth with people who are trying their hardest to do a pull request and getting frustrated that it fails because of formatting. <laughs> so yep. I'd love to see see that. If anybody has that working, let me know. So, Okay, point. last blog post of the week is one from Ben Nadal about a double encoding behavior with the CF location tag in Lucy. So, we'll put it up here on the screen. Double encoding bugs are very annoying. Let's just put that out there to start. So, um, you can see right up here where he is going through his test and you get the that strange percent something in there. So he goes through um, wh how it happened and, you know, the typical Ben deep dive in here. Deep dive. So. Now, I saw this post, but I hadn't actually read it yet. Um, I don't I don't know what the circumstances were around uh, Ben's example. Did this turn out to be a bug in Lucy or just a bug in their code? Um, it's one of those, and I think this is traditional of most of our problems, where it seems like it's probably a little bit of both. Um, <laughs> you know, the value yeah. coming back wasn't encoded correctly, but also something weird is happening in the CF location tag when he uses it that way. So, if that makes sense, it wasn't encoded correctly in the first place, but then the way it gets double encoded is strange. So, so I'm curious if the CF location tag takes the URL you give it and tries to encode things. I would think it wouldn't touch it and it would just pass it through, but maybe it tries. A lot of times I see, especially double encoding issues, happen in apps where people don't quite understand when and where they need to encode stuff, and so they're kind of like just encoding things all over the place. And then you see code where they're like passing it through like the decode function twice, like just to be sure, because they have you know one place in their app that was encoding it twice. Um, it can be a little tricky to unwrap some of that but yeah i'm I have to read i'll have to read through this and see if it appears to be a problem to see if location or not okay that wraps up our blogs tweets and videos of the week let's talk about finding a job at cfmljobs.com they have over 50 cold fusion positions from 38 companies across 25 locations in five countries there are two new jobs this week. There is a senior developer, uh, senior Cold Fusion developer in Reston, Virginia, and a Cold Fusion developer in Morrisville, <coughs> North Carolina. So we'll keep put those in the show notes for you to check out. You can also check out getcfmljobs.com to see the full listing. Uh, one more that we wanted to mention is I saw a tweet from Nolan Irk that he knew of an opportunity and to go ahead and DM him 
I put the tweet in the show notes and in the in the chat. So hopefully those of you that are looking for a job, this helps you, you know, find some opportunities for that next adventure of yours. There you go. Pass the love around if you know anybody looking. Make sure they're aware of uh, these resources like at cfmeljobs.com. So what we got next? Forgebox Module of the Week. That's right. We teased this earlier. It's from Matthew Clemente, and it is his weighted round robin package that he developed on stream. Um, so the idea here is you want to do a rotation, but there's weights instead of just random, you know, or even even. Even, even. Um, so you can define a configuration of items. Uh, they're just structs with a weight, an ID and a weight, and then when you ask for it, it's going to give it to you based on that weight. You can also throw it in with memory and caching. You could see this um, if you need to hit different APIs, you know, different endpoints in a, in a weighted way, maybe for rate limiting or something like that. This can help you out with that. And again, for sh uh, check out the video on, on Matt's YouTube for to watch him making it and talk about his use cases for it. Yep. You know, I just checked Forgebox and there's already like a couple new modules that have been posted uh, before and after his, so we're going to have to step up our uh, modules of the week. <laughs> I mean, the stuff I haven't even seen in here. Scott Steinbeck has a sun calc one, calculates the position of the sun. I mean, I don't know when I would ever need this, but it just sounds fun. Hey, where's the sun right now? I don't know. Let me pull up my sun calc module. Thanks, Forgebox. You can use it to animate the background of your app from uh, day to night mode, light to dark oh, mode. Yeah, detect the user's time zone and like show at the top of the page where the sun is. Oh, that would be clever. So. All right, this needs to happen. We are up <laughs> to 676 packages on Forgebox, it looks like. That's awesome. I remember back when it was just 100. <laughs> and half of them were mine. That's not true anymore. <laughs> yeah. right. Okay. And the VS Code uh, hint tips and tricks of the week. So this is going to be a extension you install. Now I love snippets. Um, specifically, I love mm -hmm. creating my own snippets because then I remember what they do, and I can go change them. So you know, it, you might love this the big packets packages you install that all of a sudden you have um, tab completion on a bunch of snippets that you didn't have before and that's fine but I like to create my own and in Sublime this was uh, Sublime Text sorry that's where I came from before VS Code it was uh, really great it had a great snippet manager um, easy to have a lot of power in there and I moved to the VS Code and it's not as great but this extension <laughs> makes up for some of it. So this is called Easy Snippet. And it gives you a panel if you'd like to go through like like that, which is great because there is no snippet panel in VS Code. You can see it by language. And when you open it up, you get the full snippet file instead of the weird array syntax that they make you do in the other snippets. Right? And so you can type in your snippet. You can give it the uh, prefix that you want. And when you give make your own snippets, you remember them, you use them, they actually become useful. So, so with this uh, with this plugin, can you choose where the cursor goes in the snippet? Is yes, and I uh, you can do that in normal snippets too. There's some magic okay. um, placeholders like dollar one, dollar two. I think believe set the tab points. Um, fun tip: if you use dollar okay. one twice, it will give you multiple cursors when you put it in. So I like to do that when I'm, oh, nice. I have a snippet for creating a cold box action, which uh, updates <clears throat> the name of the uh, method, the function that I create, as well as the view at the same time. And then it grabs the name of the, the first part of the view from the name of the handler. So it does like all this introspection. So yeah, you can do some right. awesome stuff with snippets and this manager makes it easier to find them and to edit them. Got it. Yeah, I like the ability, um, like when you can highlight text and hit a snippet shortcut and you can like wrap that text, which is great when you're going through and you have a variable being output and you want to wrap it in like an encode for HTML, but you want to be able to just like highlight the text and have it stick snippet text before and after it. 
Um, I've, I've worked with a couple editors that didn't have that. They just had super basic snippet functionality where we just, you know, throw in a chunk of code with your cursor at the end and it wasn't quite as useful for that. Right. Okay, that brings us to the end and to thanking our Patreon supporters. Uh, once again, thank you to those who support us on Patreon. You make this podcast possible and support our open source work on our great products like Coldbox, Commandbox, and Forgebox, as well as many other boxes. You can support us on patreon.com slash Ordis Solutions. Mm -hmm. And I'll turn it over to Brad to read the new updated list with our yeah. new names. All, I think, 30 supporters right now, which is amazing. Ben Nadell, Brett DeLine, Carl Von Stetten, Charlie Earhart, Dali, Dan Card, Daniel Garcia, David Bellinger, Didi Lesnicki, Don Bellamy, Eric Hoffman, Gary Knight, Giancarlo Gomez, Jan Yannick, Jason Diger, he's one of our new ones, Jeff McCain, Jeremy Adams, Jordan Clark, Joseph Lamry, Kai Koenig, uh, Laxma Turitardi, I don't think I said that right. I'm not going to try it again. Mario Rodriguez, uh, another one of our new ones, Matthew Clemente, Mingo Hagen, Ryan Hughes, Scott Steinbeck, Sean Oden, Stephen Klotz, Snaptrix, and Yogesh Mathur. So huge, huge thanks to our growing list of sponsors. Uh, you guys make it possible for us to put all this uh, content together, and we appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us today for the news podcast. We will be back next week. Uh, Gavin will also be back next week. And so any technical bugs will be gone next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at cfmlnews.modernizeordie.io, where you can also subscribe to your favorite podcast player like Spotify or iTunes. We also have the link to YouTube to find more videos just like this. The music used in this podcast is under a royalty-free license from Sound.com and Blue Tree Audio.